To understand what U-frame is, let's take a look at the diagram. U-frame is a complex system which is represented by the diagram engine and the code generator. So this is the key idea. You draw diagrams and you get the code generated. In runtime, U-frame is represented by kernel, which is a straightforward and consistent bootstrapper. You also can use your generated classes and perform all kinds of uh, logic you want in your game. So specifically, Uframe MVVM is a set of MVVM-related diagram nodes. You can draw MVVM-specific diagrams, and then Code Generator uses MVVM code templates to generate code based on those diagrams. The generated code usually relies on MVVM-specific classes which are used on runtime. Those are, for example, base classes for view models, views, and all that kinds of things. Both of those use the kernel to bootstrap themselves. In the editor, you can find Uframe in Window Uframe Designer. This is your main uh, work area where you draw diagrams in uh, all the related nodes, connect those, and express the architecture of your game. So, as you can see, you can define different projects. Those projects can contain graphs. Each graph is a set of nodes. You can also create different kinds of graphs in your project using the same menu right here. For example, this is an MVVM graph. It contains uh, services, links to external subsystems, and scene types. It is important to note that scene types are basically related to the kernel and are not strictly MVVM specific. This is how external main menu system looks like. And this is where this guy links to. So in here, we define different elements which represent the view models. We define their properties, collections, and commands. And inside of those, we define views with the bindings. Notice also that anytime you want to see the code which is going to be generated for each specific node, you can go to Uframe Code Preview window. Once you click a node, you will see the code which is going to be generated when you hit Save and Compile. It is especially useful for those uh, of you who is developing their own templates. Uframe menu item also contains a couple of interesting things like documentation and settings. So you can set up the look and feel of your diagram and maybe set up a good background uh, which, is, which suits your eyes. And you can also disable and enable different plugins. For example, if you don't use Unity VS plugin, you can disable this one. Uh, but now let's take a look at the general concept. So in the third part, we're going to recreate the default project. So for now, I'm going to delete this one. Now, um, to create a Uframe project, you need to create a folder. And in this folder, you can right click Uframe new project. You can rename this guy to something sensible. And notice that in the inspector, you can set up uh, a few things like project namespace. And also, if you get some graphs, uh, which are not defined in this Unity instance, so you get them elsewhere, you can connect those by hitting this plus button and you will be able to choose all the graphs which are not linked to this project. This is especially useful if you're using external subsystems. So once you have created a project, you can go to Window Uframe Designer and you will be able to choose it here. We're now in the default project, so we can create some sort of a graph. So you usually start with creating an MVVM graph because you want to define all kinds of scenes and maybe some standalone services. 
this is how the uh, graph looks like initially and this node represents the graph itself so you see this guy right here new unity graph uh, data I can rename this node to main diagram and uframe will keep things consistent and rename the file as well so once we have created the graph we can define some nodes and as I do this I will provide you with a quick explanation of the node but I encourage you to go to the documentation and read more about it and also you will learn more in the next part where we will recreate the default project itself uh, so first of all let's add a scene type and I'll call this one intro scene the scene type is part of uframe scene management system and it basically defines a scene type so once you save the scene uh, with dot unity extension like level 1 level 2 and etc uh, those are actually physical instances of the scene but in your game like let's say a platformer game you will probably have a couple of levels um, and those levels are basically the same because you always have your player you have your enemies they all follow the same logic however the content is slightly different so this is where you want to use the scene type because both of your levels are just levels so why not creating a level scene type uh, the other node that you can create is called service this one is quite important because it it is a global object that holds a specific piece of functionality so uh, you can create something like scene flow service and uh, this guy could be responsible for managing your scenes and transitioning from one scene to another based on some conditions um, the next uh, node is called simple class and it's literally what it is it's just a simple class and it can have properties and collections so let's say I got a property called name um, if you click string right here you can select different types but not of not all of your types are originally in this list so to introduce some complex types like let's say we want to create a property which is a list of strings so this is how you do it and then you link the property to the type reference and get the appropriate type right here and moreover it will be available in your list since you have defined it as a special node well the other way to introduce collections is to use the collections section um, you can add collections of certain types but remember that uh, for simple class uh, the collection is going to be um, implemented as a uh, list so it's exactly what we did right here they're both kind of the same at this point uh, the collections are also available on elements but we will get uh, to it in a second so the last node you can create here is called subsystem originally you could create uh, subsystems only in the NVVM graph but now you can create those as separated graphs and it is really a much better practice to create subsystem as an external graph and let me show you why if you create an external graph uh, of a subsystem you can then export this graph without touching any kind of other game information defined in the other uh, graphs however if you define uh, a subsystem right here oops, uh, you will not be available uh, you will not be able to uh, ex export this subsystem uh, without the rest of the graph so this is the main reason and it's especially important if you're working in a team or if you want to create a reusable external uh, subsystem so you could just export it here and import it to any other game you're developing using uframe 
uh, speaking of subsystems, they're quite important because you can define um, MVVM specific uh, nodes right here. The first one and the most important one is an element. Element basically represents a view model. So I could create a player and I can add different properties. So I could have a name, I could have a collection of tags, but unlike simple classes, this collection is observable. It's a much uh, more complex thing than just a list. So keep this in mind. But we will talk about this uh, in the next part. Uh, for now, you should know that this is a view model and just like every view model, it should have its own view. And sometimes it should have more than one view. So we could have player GUI view and maybe player avatar view. Then we have to link this element to those views. And what this means that now this view knows that it, it represents the player data. So for example, this GUI view could display the name of the player. While we could have another property, let's say a position with vector three and player avatar view could display an icon of the player uh, based on this position. It's a very simplified and absolutely not satisfying explanation of uh, the entire MVVM structure, but this is the general concept. You have a data and you have the data representation, which is specific uh, to the game engine. And we will talk about those uh, concepts in the next part in detail, but for now, let me fix my type reference so it should be correct. And let's save and compile with the diagram we currently have. So what happened right now is called code generation. So we got two folders generated for main diagram and for the external subsystem we have right here. And as you can see, external subsystem holds uh, classes which are related to the player. And we got player view model. We got a couple of the views we defined. We also got some other classes generated, which we will discuss uh, in the next part. Uh, but for now, you can see the general workflow. One last thing to mention here is that for every single class that Uframe generates, you got uh, the same structure and what I mean is if you get a player view model it's usually completely empty because it's uh, generated functionality is defined in the base class the base class contains a pile of generated code and you should never modify this section uh, without using the diagram and regenerating your code. Because once you regenerate this, uh, everything, every change you make here will be erased. So on the other hand, uh, if you modify the editable file, which is playerviewmodel.cs, uh, Uframe is never going to interfere with it. Uh, but sometimes Uframe will add uh, the bindings or handlers, which you specify in the diagram, which you can use to your advantage, but it will never erase your code uh, in any sense. Another important button here is called scaffold update kernel. And what this does, it creates a scene and a prefab. Well, specifically, it creates a scene with this prefab. The scene is the kernel of your game and we will talk about it in deep details in the next part but for now you should know that such scene holds your services system loaders and scene loaders and it requires updating uh, every time you introduce new scene type service or uh, the subsystem you can easily update it by just 
save it and compile your diagram first to ensure that all classes exist and then you can update the kernel.